All right, welcome into another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Joe Ranieri, and I am joined alongside John Sheeran of FanDuel. And listen, we've heard, and we all know, the Kentucky Derby, it has been pushed back to September the 5th. But that has not stopped, of course, all the prep races from continuing to go on leading up to that Derby now in September. And John, one of the biggest days uh, of racing, uh, regardless of when the Derby is, is going to be on Saturday at the fairgrounds. Of course, we're all looking forward to the Louisiana Derby, which of course is one of those races, the staples that has really given us a pretty good idea of possibly the horse of the year. And this weekend's card at the fairgrounds in New Orleans is absolutely loaded. Sure, Joel. Yeah, it's an exciting weekend for the fairgrounds in Louisiana. Uh, obviously, the Louisiana Derby, the main race of the day. And as you say, uh, a change complexion this year for the three-year-old division with the uh, Kentucky Derby being moved all the way back to September. Uh, it'll definitely be a first for all of us. Uh, strange to see it being run to that point in the calendar, but yes, the road to the Kentucky Derby continues nonetheless. And as I said, uh, the Louisiana Anna Derby is a good opportunity for horses in the south and, and shippers as well to get uh, the points that they need to qualify. 100 points obviously go to the winner uh, of this race down to 20, I think, for the third and fourth place finishers. Uh, so lots of points and lots of qualification on, on, on the menu for Saturday for the fairgrounds and an interesting race in, in prospect, I would say, as well. On what is a really good car, Joe, as you mentioned, we've got the Oaks uh, to go before the Derby and Finite expected to be a very strong favourite for uh, as Musson and, and Ricardo Santana Jr. in that race. She'll likely be prohibitive odds, um, but excited to see her stay, uh, you know, cement her position among the three-year-old fillies as possibly one of the best fillies in the country and interested to see how she runs too. All right, so we've got a really exciting card this Saturday, of course. Uh, it'll culminate with race 12 there, that being the Louisiana Derby. But let's start in the seventh race, John. Talk to us. A maiden special here. Talk to us about how you like this race and who you like in this race. Yeah, Joe, I thought we'd start with this race. It's an interesting race. Ma maiden special weight over a mile and a 16th on the dirt uh, track. And I thought the race shaped up really well. The seven is likely to be a strong favorite here, making his uh, second start for Michael Stidham. It's a Godolphin Colt. Colt. Uh, they made his debut at the fairgrounds actually a month ago over six furlongs. Uh, the horse was sent off at $1.80 with his entry made favorite that day. Came from a long way back, as far back as five lengths, and, and was only beaten a length and a quarter at the line. Uh, he shaped very much that day like the step up and trip was going to suit him. Uh, I just have a little doubt. He's going to take a lot of money. He's a seven to two morning line favorite. I think he'll be under two to one on the day. Um, I just think it, it's really well here for us to take a shot against him. Obviously, it looks like a good move, the step up and trip here for him. He's bred to get it, and he. He will be the one to beat, no doubt. Um, but as I said, he's going to take that money. And I think it feels better taking a shot against him now that he has to prove he can route as well as he can sprint. Very, very different game. And sometimes you see these horses finishing strongly over sprint trips, Joe, that don't necessarily translate that to going a mile and beyond. So um, I, the one horse was sec uh, was actually second that day, just a place ahead of him. Um, I don't like him stepping up and trip at all. He, he battled on strongly, but I think the step up and trip will find him out. So I'm moving to the four, which is a new shipper coming in from California, from Santa Anita, a horse trained by Neil Drysdale called Reprobate. Um, he gets Joel Rosario back in the plate um, after he rode him on debut, actually. And he, he shaped encouragingly on debut that day, I thought. He was... That he attracted money that day and was sent off a three to one shot. He was beaten four lengths, but I think that performance is on, on a par with pretty much everything else in the in the race here. He then stepped up on that, going up to a mile on his second start where he was slowly away. He didn't really show a lot, but he was sent off 13 to one that day. And I just wonder whether it came too soon from just three weeks after that debut. He now gets blinkers uh, on for the very first time and they give him Lasix. And Neil Drysdale has a really excellent record book in Joel Rosario. He's booked him 10 times over the last 12 months. And on five of those occasions, uh, they've teamed together for a winner. I like this son of blame here. And I think he'll really appreciate the more emphasis on stamina, particularly with this race looking to have, I think, at least three horses that are likely to be vying for the lead. I'll take a chance on him. I think he'll probably, he's six to one on the morning line, Joe. He'll probably be more like a four to one, nine to two shot on the day. But I think his ability is on par with pretty much everything else we've seen. With the seven taking all that money, I'll just side with the four instead. And hopefully Joel Rosario can get us off to a good start. All right. I, like I said, loaded car when you got $50,000 maiden specials that we're breaking down for you. You know it's going to be a special race day. 
How about race eight, the Tom Benson Memorial, $100,000 $100, uh, Tom Benson Memorial, in fact. How is this race shaping up for you? Yeah, I thought this race was an interesting one as well, Tom. They're on the turf here going the same trip as the previous race, a mile in a 16th. Uh, much more experienced horses for four-year-old uh, fillies and mares, so all the females running here for $100,000 purse, as you said. Um, I think it falls between three horses here. The one, the two, and the nine are the ones I would concentrate on. They look to have the strongest form. Um, I think a lot of the money will fall to the two, which is Althea for Chad Brown. Uh, Joel Rosario teams up with Chad here to ride this horse who comes and ships here from Tampa Bay. Ran in a grade three at Tampa, recording a career best 92 buyer that day when only beaten a neck um, over this exact trip. So you don't have any concerns about stamina and on breeding with that French um, sire of Siuni. Um, that, that's to be expected. This horse has had seven starts at this trip and, and finished in the money six times, although never recording a win. And the strike rate for me is a small bit of a concern. When you're talking about Chad Brown horses, Joe, you know you're going to take a lot of money. Two wins from 17 lifetime starts, usually on the premises, but really dependent on a strong pace up front. And that's my angle into this race. I'm not necessarily sure you're going to get a strong uh, pace to run at. And unless the rain comes and there is some forecast for Saturday, um, I would look to try and get Altia beat here. And the first place people will probably look will be to that nine horse who beat the one uh, last time at, Hugh at Sam Houston, uh, coming from well off the pace under Flavian Pratt to win. Um, that was a mile and a 16th on the turf course, but that race, race set up really, really well for winning envelope, came off a strong pace, there was horses dueling on the lead and managed to get up in the last 16th and win actually going away by over three lengths. I just think the one is the horse here. I think this race sets up really well for Brad Cox's um, Dream Passage, the, the daughter of Stormy Atlantic. Um, this horse was coming back off a layoff in that race that I just mentioned did really well to hold on for second, vied for the, the lead the whole way around the racetrack and still managed to hold on for second. I expect that horse to strip much fitter. Um, Brad Cox has a, a very good strike rate all across the board, but does really well with second off the bench, 26% uh, strike rate out of a huge sample size of 425. Does really well with Florent Giroux, who I love on the turf. And I'm hoping that the one horse dream passage can just sit on the lead dictate its own pace and try and kick clear and hold off the deep closers. I think he'll be second or third favourite. Hopefully Altia takes all the money and that we're left with a decent price on Dream Passage. Uh, so the one in race eight for me. You know, it's funny, interesting stat too. Dream Passage, you mentioned, of course, uh, did a great job finishing second in the last race, uh, but was the chalk and uh, trainer Brad Cox, and this should, probably shouldn't surprise nobody, he rebounds. 31% with beaten favorites the race before. So, you know, Brad Cox and a lot of people there, John, should kind of pay attention to who the trainer-jockey combos are in a lot of these races here, especially at this track. Absolutely. I mean, Brad Cox is an excellent trainer. Like I said, his stats across the board are all 20, 25% plus. Um, and he teams up with Joel Rosario 26% of the time. Huge sample size again in the last 12 months, 306 times they've teamed up uh, and they've had a 26% strike rate and they even do even better here at the fairgrounds, which is obviously relatively local for Brad Cox, 28% strike rate when they're teaming together. And I think you get an awful lot of insight into um, trainers and when their horses are really strongly fancied. I just like the look of this one, Joe. Second up off the bench and Florent Giroux back in the irons. Love it. All right, let's move on. Getting closer, of course, to the big race, the 12th race, the Louisiana Derby. But let's talk about the $300,000 Munez Memorial Classic Stakes Grade 2 at the fairgrounds, of course, in Louisiana. This will be race 10. And tell us, John, uh, is it another, are we looking at the chalk in this race? Yeah, I think so. I, I'd be very, very surprised if the 12 isn't favorite here. Um, Synchrony is a really solid animal for Michael Stidham. Joe Bravo rides it and they team together at a 21% strike rate down there, which is really excellent. Joe Bravo would be much more uh, well known up around these parts in Monmouth. Obviously, Jersey uh, born uh, jockey as well. So pretty surprising to see a good strike rate like that for, for, for him down there. Um, this horse is just a really excellent turf horse, Joe. Six times he's run at the fairgrounds, six times he's hit the boards. He's run eight times at the trip, uh, seven times he's hit the boards, and he's run 26 times in his life, and he's hit the board 20 times. So you know what you're getting from Synchrony. It's always a really strong run. 
Again, second off the bench. I do like that angle. Trainers a 21% strike rate, second up off this sort of a layoff, teaming together with Joe Bravo. I, I think this horse is littered with horses that are relatively so. Horses like um, Dot Matrix, you know, these are they're good horses, but without necessarily being win machines. Channel Maker's another one, the eight, um, that usually runs his race is very, very solid in the grade, but finds winning relatively difficult. One win in the last and nine starts, for example. Whereas you look at Synchrony and you see, you know, two wins from the last eight, four from six at the track, three from eight at the trip, coming off a really, really good run behind factor this of Brad Cox's. Um, and I just think that this race will set up much better. There seems to be a little bit more speed in here. I expect the likes of Instill Regard and those horses to push along early and push factor this on and leave it uh, to one of the deep closers. And I expect this horse to be coming with a really strong late run, uh, Joe. And I, I'd be very, very surprised if we don't get a really strong run for our money here. He's a three to one in the morning line horse. I think he'll probably go off south of that. Um, he's been down there for some time and been working well. I note there a first of 53 workers on March 7th as well, which gives me a strong indication that that horse is ready and prime for a big, big run. And with that record at the fairgrounds, I'd be very, very surprised this horse not bang there. Talk to me about uh, Channel Maker there. William Mott out of the barn posted, of course, one of his best uh, times. Round two, you got a 16% angle here with Mott at this track. What do you think about maybe uh, him somewhere in the exotics? Yeah, Channel Maker is just a really admirable horse. If you, uh, if you look at his, his form, Joe, it's littered with grade ones and grade twos all the way through his career. I just find him, he's, he's difficult to predict. Sometimes he's off the speed and he's coming with late runs. Other times he's on the lead and not holding on. He shaped okay, actually, the last time behind a very easy winner in Zulu Alpha at Gulfstream Park. That would be a very, very good prep for this run. As you say, Bill Mott, an excellent trainer. Junior Alvarado rides. He's going to be bang there. But this horse is usually a four to six to one shot. And for me, just one that you should be opposing. A lot of seconds on his card. He's finished second as many times as he's won. And as I said, in the last nine um, nine starts, only managed one. I do respect him. I think he'll be not very far away. I just trust Synchrony to put his head down when it really matters a little bit more. All right. And then, of course, that leads into uh, the big race of the day. Race number 12, the $1 million Louisiana Derby grade two and some fantastic horses in this race. This is going to be a classic. How does it shape up for you? Yeah, it's a good race. Um, a lot of uh, reopposing horses from the Risen Star, uh, which was run a month ago in two divisions at the fairgrounds over a slightly shorter trip of a mile and an eighth. They go up to a mile and three sixteenths here on the dirt. Um, this is, as we said, a good qualifier for uh, the Kentucky Derby with the winner getting 100 points in the qualification for that big race now in September that we're so used to being uh, the first weekend in May. Um, very interesting with those reopposing um, horses from the Risen Stars. I said running two divisions. I think the Mr. Monomoy division is by far and away the stronger. I think it was run nearly a second quicker uh, than the secondary division, which was won by Modernist for Bill Mott, who runs here as well. Um, I'm inclined to ignore uh, Modernist, Major Fed, New York traffic. I just felt like that was a lot of slow horses. The time wasn't very good. It was run as, on the same car the next race after uh, Mr. Monomoy, and therefore I think that that form is really, really substandard. So I'm taking a shot away from all of those horses. I think by far and away the horse to beat is the 10 for Mark Cassie, called Enforceable. Uh, good owner there in John Oxley, and this is a nice horse, the son of of Tappet, who shaped really well in that risen star behind Mr. Monomoy, who was an all the way winner. He got a little bit out of his ground and finished off very strongly. Um, he got within two lengths of the winner and, and definitely shaped like he was going to improve for that. The only problem I have with him is he's going to take a lot of money here. Joey's an obvious favourite. He shaped well. Everybody can see it on paper. And I just have a little bit of a doubt about these horses that have run at the fairgrounds in those two divisions of the Risen Stars to actually how really good they are. Um, so I wanted to try and take a shot against all of those horses. Um, enforceable by far and away, the one that you would have to prefer out of those races. Um, I looked at Portos, the nine horse for Todd Pletcher. It comes off um, a, a decent run in the Withers, but he just looked really slow. He got a good set up that day and couldn't get within. He ended up finishing third, but he was still beaten nearly four lengths. He didn't do anything very quickly for me. So he's a horse I would look to, to try and oppose as well. He didn't look that fast. 
Um, and as I looked at this race, even though there was a potential for some speed to be on, I wanted to try and find a new shipper, maybe something that had a little bit more pace than a lot of these deeper closers. And I landed on the tr on the three, Joe, another Brad Cox horse called Wells Bayou. Um, he ran really well in the Southwest Stakes at Oak Lawn, which is another Kentucky Derby qualifier. He was only beaten a length, but he was forced to kind of run pretty hard early. It was his first uh, race in graded company after uh, winning easily and, and an allowance or an optional claiming 80 grand race at Oak Lawn Park. I just think this horse a lot of upside. I think he'll easily gra grab the rail under Florent Giroux. And I think there's a decent chance here that the jockeys realise there's a lot of slow horses going to be coming late and they may actually be able to steady it up a little bit better than it might look on paper. On paper, it looks like there's plenty of horses that want to go forward. Um, but I'm hoping that Florent can get out, get the rail early, slow things down and dictate. This horse has got a buyer speed figure for that Southwest Stakes of 96, which is better than anything else already in the field. And I feel like if he can get out in front and set his own fractions, there's a decent chance he can improve. He should be a decent price. He's an 8-1 to one morning line, Joe. He's not going to be 8-1. to one. I would probably expect somewhere in the region of 5-6-1 to six to one instead. But I think I'd rather take him at those odds than you know rely on enforceable coming from the back. Yeah, and enforceable is going to come from the back for sure. Uh, hit the money, I believe, six of uh, six of eight of his career starts. But I'm with you, Wells Bayou. That last race, he gets a similar effort and a similar trip here. He could be in the winner's circle here at a pretty good price, John. Yeah, I, I really do like him. I mean, I, I found it a tricky race initially because I was concerned about the pace makeup. But the more I look at some of these closers, the more I look at the horses that have been running around the fairgrounds in those two starts in the Risen Star and now here, I just felt like it was a race where you could potentially take a shot with a new uh, form line and try and get them all beat. And this this horse, you know, at least on paper, he maps out well. There is a concern that he gets forced to race too hard too early and maybe vulnerable late on. But at those odds, I think we can take a chance, Joe. Yeah, and don't, uh, listen, Major Fed's got a what? A, a win in, in two places, I believe, here at the fairgrounds. He was coming. I mean, he gave Modernist this little extra, uh, you know, 16th of a mile here. Maybe that could make the difference uh, with him showing up somewhere in the money. I think Joel Rosario is a really good booking for him. I think jo Joel Rosario gets a lot of critics for some of his rides, but what he is very, very effective is deep closers late on the piece, yeah. arriving late on the dirt. And I think this, this horse will really react well to him. Again, it was just that slow race. And I watched the race back a couple of times, Joe, and I liked him. As you said, on paper, I liked him. But then when I looked at the race, he just looked really slow to me. He did work really, really well two weeks after that Risen Star went a four furlong clip uh, bullet in 47. And that was the fastest on that day. So maybe that race has sharpened him up a bit. I wouldn't discount him entirely. Um, I just rather have something closer to the lead in terms of looking for the winner. It's a huge weekend in racing, of course, uh, on Saturday at the fairgrounds. It'll all culminate to that race, race number 12, the $1 million Louisiana Derby. And, of course, the winner uh, will be taking a trip to uh, Churchill Downs September 5th for the Kentucky Derby. On behalf of John Sheeran, I'm Joe Ranieri. I want to thank you very much for stopping by. Good luck to you this weekend with your plays. It's been another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.